We now welcome in Chad Lewis, former BYU football hey. standout, a guy who caught a huge touchdown pass in an NFC Championship game for the Philadelphia <laughs> Eagles. Took one for the team, man. Playing for Andy Reid, and now your former Eagles are taking on your former head coach who's with the Chiefs now, and your son-in-law's with the Chiefs. How are you handling this week emotionally as you prepare for the Super Bowl? I'm pumped. I've, been, I've wanted this matchup all year long. I mean, these are my two favorite teams by far. And Matt Bushman, my son-in-law, playing on the Chiefs, it's just the coolest thing ever. He's on the practice squad, so if something happens to someone in the next three days of practice, he's got a chance to actually play in the Super Bowl. But and he almost did. Um, last year. Last year, right? Yeah. yeah. Last year, halftime, he knew he was going to play in the Super Bowl if they advanced, and they were whooping on the Bengals till the Bengals turned around and beat them. So exciting times for Matt. He had a great game against the Packers preseason, two touchdowns, then broke his collarbone a couple plays later. Spent the season getting healthy. Now he's healthy. First day he could get taken back, Chiefs took him back. So I'm very grateful for Andy. Profoundly grateful. I mean, that's my family. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. So I assume you're rooting for the Eagles, but is there some sort of split thing here with Andy and Matt with the Chiefs? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm a member of the church, so family first and everything. <laughs> like, I'm all about family. Like, yeah. I want Matt and Emily to have every good thing. You know, when I, when I say my prayers, that's what I'm thinking about. You know, how can they have every, every great thing? And this is a great thing. Now, I also am like the, uh, the Kelsey parents. I got family on both sides, yeah. deep family, roots, <laughs> love. Like, uh, I love Andy like he's part of my family. We've communicated weekly for years. And I also love the Eagles. The Chiefs have never given me one paycheck, not for six cents. <laughs> and the Eagles have paid me a lot of money. I mean, there's a give and take relationship that you have with fans, with an organization. And so that's family. But I think everyone understands exactly how this works. My son-in-law is on the team. Let's go. You go so, so either way, you're good. It's win-win, bittersweet. It's win-win, I mean, bittersweet. No matter who yeah. I see after the game, it's a big hug or it's like, I feel for you, you know, like I've, I've been on the losing end of a Super Bowl and it hurts. I mean, 18 years later, I, I still feel it. I wish we would have beat the Patriots that, that day, you know, but bam, that's life. Keep Absolutely. going. <laughs> Ain't no crying about it. Just move <laughs> forward. Chad Lewis is with us on BYU Sports Nation. I want to dive into your relationship with Coach Reed a little bit more. When did that all begin and, and how has it evolved to where it is today great question he's the best let's start it off right there he will be a first ballot hall of famer absolutely yep. best yep. coach in the business best man in the business i first met him at the combine he was with the packers we had a great talk and he was the tight ends coach he was trying to get me to the packers um then i went to the eagles as an undrafted free agent went to the rams um a year and two games later and the Rams I ended up getting cut right before we won the Super Bowl. And I went back to the Philadelphia Eagles, now Andy Reid head coach. So when he's at the Eagles head coach first year, um, and when I was on the waiver wire, he grabbed me. So the first day I get there, I was picked on the waiver wire by the 49ers, Steve Young still there, the Colts, and the Eagles. The first thing he said was, hey, I know you wanted to go back and play with Steve Young, but I need you here. Let's turn this thing around. I said, Coach, I've already been in my playbook. I'm ready to roll. And I caught a touchdown that week against the Colts. <laughs> I was made the starting tight end for the Philadelphia Eagles Monday, and that's how it went. Um, since then, we've been tight. Wow. It, that's awesome. Uh, playing with Steve would have been fun too, right? Yeah, that would have been a blast. And a, Was it a young Peyton Manning at that point? Or it was a young you, Peyton Manning, okay. yeah. That was throwing a ton of picks? Yeah. That's why I caught <laughs> a touchdown on that game, because he ripped us and... <laughs> <laughs> that week you ripped you guys? Yeah. Nice. So well, you, got you don't, you don't seem end. bothered by it at all. Yeah, yeah, it got me a starting job. You know, <laughs> and then I can prove myself. Absolutely. Okay, okay you, you go to the Eagles, and uh, everybody knows Andy loves BYU. Yeah. Did you, were the BYU conversations happening when you were a player, or did that all, the all time. start after? All the time. He was so fun about it. He's, he came to BYU, not a member of the Church of Jesus Christ. He came here and met a girl named Tammy. He's playing football. And as they're dating, Tammy's like, hey, Reed, if you want, want to marry me, I'm getting married in the temple. He's like, what's that? She's like, you better find out. <laughs> Not only did he find out, but he, he turned his life into a disciple of Christ in a way that has never stopped. 
That's who he is. His love for the church, his love for BYU is similar. So when he talks to the team, he doesn't like shy away from who he is or BYU. He's like, he's still a new convert to BYU. He's still a new convert to the church in that sense that he's got a light, light heart, like a good heart. So he banters with his team and like he would tell the Eagles, Hey, Chad's my favorite player. I'm like, coach, you can't say that, man. My <laughs> teammates are going to rip me. <laughs> but he has fun with it, and he celebrates it. And so right now they have Zane Anderson and Matt Bushman on the so team, cool. yeah. and he loves it. He's like, hey, give me some more BYU guys. I Let's love go. that story about Tammy, too, uh, having spent some time with her, because she's absolutely a firecracker. She's a pistol. Um, yep. And I she's love so all of her fun. nicknames for Andy. Yeah. You know, <laughs> AR and Reed, Andrew. I you know, know. Like, she just... It's, she is who she is. So it doesn't yeah. surprise me at all that she said that. It was fun. Uh, Andy, on the bye week, his bye week came to the BYU football game. Yeah. So Just, stood, also just at the sat game. in the crowd. Yeah. He wanted to be what? in the crowd. What? We had a box for him. We're like, hey, no, no one can mess with you. And his son, Spencer, who's our strength and conditioning coach. Who moved into my ward, said, by the way. Dad, I don't need you sitting up in the box. Like, there's people down there. We got recruits down there. Come down. And he's like, Okay. So he came down, sat in the stands. And then they announced him in the stadium. And then, and then Greg was like, oh, yeah, Andy's here. Like, <laughs> whatever seat. And I was like, we're giving away the seat. <laughs> um, no, but Andy's so cool. Like, he's so personable. He doesn't have to be. He could absolutely be. Okay, my next statement slash question in no way takes away from what Lavelle did. But at some point, Andy Reid built off that amazing knowledge and experience with Lavelle and became the greatest coach that's, ever been associated with BYU. Like, yeah. he almost stood on his shoulders in a way to be like, okay, let's elevate this thing at the next level. Andy has done something amazing, which is in the NFL, he's now in his third Super Bowl. He's going for a second win. Like, he'll be first ballot Hall of Famer. It's pretty special. It's kind of like what Steve did, right? Building off guy, Ty did by winning the Heisman. What do you think of sort of that evolution of Andy continuing sort of that coaching legacy from Lavelle? It's true. Perfect question. He stands on the shoulders of Lavelle. And the cool thing about Andy is he's never walked away from Lavelle. Like, he embraced him as a player and as a person. And he continued that relationship. He would, Lavelle would either call or write him a note every week. And sometimes when I was with the Eagles, Andy would pull me in and say, man, look at this. Look at this note from Lavelle. He is classic. Like, his love for Lavelle <laughs> was just so real and genuine and, and cool. And... The thing that he learned from Lavelle was pass the ball. And so he's stepped his foot on the gas his entire career. He wants to throw the ball. He wants to score points. He's been so progressive as a coach. He's cutting edge. You see what they do with Mahomes, with whoever's on their team. Kelsey, I'm watching his routes. I'm like, bro, I love that. I love his creativity. He's a 60-plus-year-old coach, but he's still mentally cutting edge. And he's calling the plays. Calling the he's plays. Calling he's the play. right in the rhythm. Like, his players love him. They don't, like, jump on him as hard as we used to. Um, so they're a little tender with him. <laughs> but, man, they love him. Who's running hook and ladders in the first half? Andy, Andy Reid is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right? that, that's oh, Who's running ring around the rosies in the huddle? And then, you yeah. know, that was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so he allows you to have fun. One of the things he says always is, hey, you got to let your personality show. You got to have fun out there. Don't be tight. Like, be you. Let, let it cut it loose. That's what he wants from his team. So you see what they're doing in practices, like coming up with stuff. And if it works or he likes it, it's in the game. And he's not afraid of that. The personality thing is called Jamaling yeah. Yeah, oh, around yeah, here. Right. Yeah. What, what is this week like? I know it's 18-ish years removed or 20 years removed from when you were kind of in this scenario, Chad. But what's this week like as an NFL player when you are preparing for the Super Bowl? It's so fun. Uh, the championship game is your Super Bowl. I mean, that's it, where you're in a, either a home or away crowd, super intense. You're winning your conference. And when you win that conference, you go to the Super Bowl, then everything changes. The, the media requests are off the hook in a way that's both fun and, like, super, can be super distracting. Um, practices are... Your, your coaches are trying to get ready for the biggest game of their lives. You're trying to do both. Get ready for the biggest game of your life and enjoy the moment. That moment is a tiny window that may never come again. So you're trying to do both. And the coaches that can 
you know, cut down distractions the most and get you focused on your job are typically, you know, the ones who win the game. So, okay, Big 12 schedule came out. Uh, what what do you think? Oh my goodness, this is what this is the first thing I thought of. Right before Elder L. Tom Perry, Quorum of the Twelve, passed away, he put me in a headlock. <laughs> what? A headlock. And he said, when are we going to stop playing Patsy's in November? <laughs> <laughs> so since he's talking smack, I was talking smack what? back. I'm like, well, wow. can you give us a bunch of cash and get us like somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> and so it was really fun. But it's, it was, look at what Tom Homo did with, and our coaches. All the Tom's. Schedule. It's to get a schedule going, like in Independence, it wasn't easy, but yep. they made it great. Yep. And now we, we're in a conference where, look at what November is going to be like. <laughs> we're fighting Virginia, for a championship. Iowa State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. I think BYU's going to have up. a good record going into November. I do too. I think I'm pumped. November is going to be really important. I would say this: Tom Homo has done an incredible job with the coaches, the players, administration, constantly talking to us about putting our foot on the gas. Being ready for, look, this is a big jump. Don't soft pedal this. We have to be ready in every way. And it doesn't happen overnight. It happens right now, every day, one step at a time. Let's get ready. He's been, he's been really good at making sure that we understand this is big time. Mm. I'm already ready for it to be an emotional experience when Oklahoma is in Lavelle Edwards Stadium on November 18th on senior night as part of the Big 12. Like, just a culmination of so many years, decades of yeah. just working and hoping that this thing oh, actually like a fruition. 50 year build, right? I'm just imagine, I'm trying to think Henry Beiming is probably tall enough to be the other guy who could put you in a headlock. <laughs> is that <laughs> like from a height standpoint? That's How tall right. was Elton like 6'4 or something? He was like 6'2, six, 6'3. Six, he was a big oh, guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. His personality was big and his big barrel chested guy. So, <laughs> love him. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, That's love a him. Fantastic story. Chad, we Thanks, appreciate Jeff. all of the stories that you shared with us today. Yeah. Perfect for Super Bowl week. One more week, then out of the boot. Go, yes, get oh, you healthy. Catching more touchdowns. Get you back on the One golf course. One more week, the boot's on the shelf, and I'm dunking again. Get you on the golf course. Yeah, let's course. go. Right.